Blog Talk Radio. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, world? Well, it's badass thugging like I usually do. And you better turn it up, bust some speakers out, because we off the motherfucking cup. You dig how we do it? Dog Pound Gangsters 2000 and beyond. Yo, yo, check this out. This is your girl, Cola Boat, and I'm chilling with my boys right here on Off the Cuff Radio. Because we're off the cuff right now. You big? Yeah. Uh-oh. What's up? What's up? It's your boy, Lil Yap, with UNLV. Ragging up from the river. Cooling with my homies and my family at Off the Cuff Radio. Y'all be sure to tune in on Fridays and get the latest scoop and find out what's happening. You avoid me? And it's Queen Crazy, your girl, favorite bartender. And we're from Sex on the Rocks Podcast. All right, you're now tuning in to Off the Cuff Radio. Yeah, because they keep representing that world hip hop. Well, much love. All right. Love y'all. This is Miss Irritated with Queen Crazy. Giving a shout out to the live show on Friday night off the cuff radio. And I'm live from the 704. Make sure y'all tune in for the blazing hot music. Hey y'all, this is Stacey Lache giving a shout out to King Eric and off the cuff radio. What's shaking, y'all? This is the grand. One half of Lost Cause and one third of that drive time thing. Sending my love to the homies over at Off The Cuff Radio. Tune in every Friday night for some real, still hip-hop conversation. These dudes are the connoisseurs of this thing. You already know what it is. BX Stand Up, Hud City, we're shaking. Peace. Yo, this is Joe Fresh to Dine, and y'all tuned in to the most raw, uncut show on radio. The guillotine team, Off The Cuff. And yo, Eric Sandman, Off The Cuff Clown, man. We are now tuned in at episode 359, y'all. What's the deal? I am your host of the evening, King Eric the Great, a.k.a. Rick Capo, soon to be joined by my co-host, T-Max. And we have a special show lined up, man. This is an honor and privilege, man. And I got T-Max on the line right now. What to do, what to do, OTC, another chapter of championshipness. On a Sunday fun day, and it's King Eric and myself. And King, like you said, man, yo, we we got a legend, man. Go 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 ahead and break it down, man, because this legend, we are so honored, we're so privileged, we're so humble, we are so blessed to have him on again. Go ahead and tell tell tell, tell the audience who we got, man. <laughs> first of all, let me let me be the first to say that I want to give a shout shout out to Dyer Lansky from Die Four Radio for helping making yeah. this connection here. Because he pulled yeah. some strings and got this guy on the board for one of our biggest shows. He made a surprise call in, and it was a great look for it. It was a beautiful thing hearing his energy, hearing that he's in good spirits. And now he's coming home, y'all. And this guy here is a legend in the West Coast, certainly a big contributor to one of the most powerful, most impactful albums to ever drop from the West, the Lynch Mob album. And now he's on board, he's coming home, and we're here to celebrate with him. What's all welcome? J.D., y'all. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. What's happening? What's going on, man? man? That was we one hell of We got to give you the coming home ovation intro. before we start, brother. We know we got to do it. It's only right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Tell you right. What's happening? Off the cuff. Keeping that shit way too West Coast and real, though. What's happening with y'all, bro? Man, man, what's going on with you, man? We happy to, we happy to, to hear you. from you, man. Yes. yes. Hey, man, it's an honor. Yes. It's an honor and a pleasure, man. Thank you for the invite, man. I hope that uh, the connection is clear enough for us to, you know, do the fan base and justice and, um, I want to give a shout out to Don Lasky as well, man. That's been a brother we haven't spoken in a couple of moons, man. But he been good to me, had my back, rolled with me, and helped me get a lot of things taken care of business wise, man. So much love to DL and Die for Radio. 
Most definitely. Definitely, definitely. So we get this thing started, man. Like, how you feeling these in these days, man? Well, shit, I got that monkey off my back. I walked it all off. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you like this. I wait for the doors to bust open, man. I was found suitable for parole on the 16th of December. Uh, my beautiful mm. wife, Dr. Cookie Cooper, she been riding shotgun with me, man, and uh, she held me down until I crossed this finish line. And uh, it's a blessing, brother. It's a blessing to still be alive, healthy, focused, uh, post-COVID. You feel me? Definitely, man. You know, uh, and one thing about it, Jay, is that, you know, last time we spoke to you, you know, we were so surprised yet so pleasantly appreciative. And, you know, and, I mean, you know, when you joined us four years ago, man, you know, and it's like it, it's, it's something to, you know, really, really speak to the Almighty, to the Most High, that, you know, like you said, man, you know, your time, you're crossing that finish line on your release <clears throat> and that, uh, you know, that you, you know, that more than anything, you're healthy, you know, your mind and body is good, you know, and, and you know, most importantly, man, you are so optimistic, you know, we can hear the enthusiasm in your voice, the joy that resonates, you know, uh, you're an inspiration and a motivation, you know, even with what has been going down for almost, you know, the past 30 years, man, you know, uh, and we just, we just want to say how much we appreciate you, yeah, man, so I mean, so we know you've been keeping the ear to the street, man. So, I mean, what's been going on? How are you feeling about the West Coast moving right now in terms of what's been happening? Because, you know, a lot's been going on during that time. Well, it has been a lot, man. And uh, the coronavirus ain't made <laughs> shit that easy to, you know, to deal with, man. It has robbed people of a lot of their livelihood. You know, cats haven't been able to perform the shows that can pay a lot of bills. So cats have to diversify their hustle. And uh, it's been a hard one, man. And, um, uh, just basically trying to keep up with the West Coast is a separate job in and of itself, you know. But uh, I love I love to see the resilience of these brothers out here. I love to see my brothers like, you know, Compton AV and AD from Lantana and Skeen and then from Inglewood, <laughs> you know. I love them cats, you know, niggas like Skeen. Even my boy the game, man, he find ways, man, to stay innovative, you know. And then not to mention the fact that Ice Cube, man, got this Mount Westmore thing going on, this super group that they compose in him, Snoop yeah, Dogg, too short, and too short. Too short. Yeah. yeah, so, you yeah, know, a man. brother keep his ear to the streets as much as possible, being confined in these quarters, man, but uh, I got a project or two, locked and loaded, ready to be released, and uh, it's just uh, one step at a time, brother, small steps. Once I knock this wall down right here and hit that 10 freeway, the world opened up again for me, you know? Yeah, you've been man. keeping that pen you know, sharp while you're behind the walls, huh? Absolutely, brother. This is a black man's college. It's free too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is yeah, a black. Man. This is a black man's college right here. It's uh, every appeal granted, every fee is waived. Yeah, but all you got to do is find some discipline, find your lane, get in it, man. Duck these suckers because they got them in every color and every corner. And uh, go ahead, and I educated myself. Brother, I went and got me a degree in sociology, and I went and got a degree in business management. And uh, what I wanted to do was just kind of check out the dynamics of how society has changed over the years and not be, you know, culturally shocked once a brother touched down. So that was the whole incentive to continue to educate myself. And now I'm about to go work in this nonprofit one of my brother's uh, moms has started called the Mike Breeze Center, and uh, go ahead and start this leadership program, this mentoring program, a music program, and a computer program. And that's what your brother head is at right now today, you know? That's what it is, Jay. Um, and, your, and your educational endeavors are so excellent in terms of, you know, you pressing forward. You know what I'm saying? Look, you know, see, you got a degree in sociology. You know you got to d- touch down with Dr. Ty Boyd and Harry Edwards. You know you all got to get together and get an educational cycle with it too now, you know. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. But you right. know, from, so and you know from what? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying. No, no, no. You're right. You're absolutely right. Look, man. Uh, I know we press the time. We probably lose uh, in a couple of minutes. I might have to uh, hang up and hit y'all back. But what I do want to say is thank you for the platform. You know, 
And what I do want to say is I want to give a shout-out and, and a great big thank you to the Brother Ice Cube. It's been a lot of stuff, you know, going on over right. the years, and a lot of people hating on my brother. And, and uh, I just finished talking to Dub C a minute ago, one of my – actually, one of my mentors right there, Dub, keep it real with me, 24-7. And, um, you know, I love them brothers, man. They opened up the door for me. The first time I ever got a chance to rap and actually put my voice to a record was with Dub C. Ice Cube gave me the opportunity to be on America's Most Wanted, which is a, a West Coast classic. But the first time yeah. I had to really construct bars and spit was You Don't Work, You Don't Need with Dub C. And this just so happened that everything has come full circle, man, and I can't wait to get out and work with these brothers again. Man, Lil' Jay, you know, we got to shout out Dub C, 111, NC, we see y'all. You know, of course, we got to give, you know, a rest, you know, just a rest in peace. Remember, it's, of course, the Crazy Tunes, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we also got to give a rest in peace. Crazy Shorty. Tunes and Shorty Muhammad, bro. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, man, that's Shorty. Yeah. yeah, the Shorty was on all one of the last shows we did and when we had the whole lynch mob as a collective. So it was good to yeah, get that man. one last part out there, man. But one more question to shoot to you, man, is if you, if you press for time, is do y'all have like a reunion going on? Like you spoke to Chill and them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually wrote a whole album. It's about 15 songs deep. It's called Family Business. It's going to be the reunification of the lynch mob. It's going to be everybody from every corner, you know, of the table. And, uh, of course, we got to put Don Mack at the head of the table. You know, that's the boss. But uh, Dub C, the underboss. I'm going to be, the, you know, the captain. Of the street soldiers, JD, you know, and uh, I got my boy three. I'm going to go grab Yo Yo. I'm pulling T Bone. Oh, I'm going to get Dazzy, KD. I'm even pulling oh, Dale down from the bay. So, family oh, business man. is going to be this resurrection, this one funky resurrection of the lynch mob. You have 60 seconds remaining. It's going to shock the shit out of a lot of people. Y'all give me a couple of seconds. I'm going to hit you back and I'm going to conclude. Uh, with the project, and uh, we could go from there. Most yeah, definitely. Yeah. What we're going to do, we could go on a brief music break. We're going to play one of y'all classic tunes, as a matter of fact, the one that put me on to y'all, Gorillas in the Mist. So we're going to yeah. hit y'all with some music, and we'll have we'll definitely have J.D. back on the line. And I remember, if y'all are trying to call and talk to him, the number is 516-531-9596, and press 1. You got to be on point. You got JD on the line, damn it. So let's go.
all y'all getting right there. That's all y'all getting. Y'all getting a snippet of it. If y'all want to hear the entire version, y'all going to have to hit up the line and pay for them albums. All $79 of it. <laughs> that's what that, you, that's what, that uh, what you call it, Ray's going for on eBay, man. Yes, sir. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. I told JD, yeah, I was like, look, I they got to hit that line, pay that $80. That's all y'all getting. Got to pay that $80. That's a trip, and the shit might come from Japan before they get it. Shit. Man. This call Yo, and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Make no mistake where I'm at. This shit is real. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, and that's wild, Jay, because when we look at, you know, the West Coast in terms of, you know, the time from when, you know, y'all were, you know, of course, y'all were coming out in, like, you know, 1992, man. It's like when you look at all those albums that came out between those years, between 92, 95, 2000, I mean, we're talking about the Murder Squad album. Shout out to South Central Cartel. Shout out to KD with the ass gas, the cash, nobody ride, no one rides for free album. I mean, threat stick in the head. I mean, and y'all album. I mean, it, it, it's. I mean, you all were, you know, of course, you know what NWA did, kicking down that door for the West, and then you all coming behind it and really stamping it down for the West, man. I mean, did you all know the type of movement that you all had? It was going to resonate almost, you know, 30 years later in terms of what you all contributed. It, it, it's funny you say that, though. I mean, uh, definitely shout out to NWA, you know, Dre, Easy, Rest in Peace, uh, Ice Cube, Ren, Yellow. That was a launch pad. That was a launch pad right. for us to kind of kick it off because prior to them, Cash, man, the West didn't have that type of music. And when you look uh, at what that gave birth to, and then you see that we came with this politically conscious hip hop, but still try to keep it gangster. Then Ice Cube on the other side uh, of the table with us just raw as a motherfucker. Excuse me for cussing like this, but he was just raw as oh, a no. motherfucker. Death certificate, <laughs> you cup, know, man. death certificate yeah. was, yeah, it, it was it was something that it was beautiful, you know. And I remember, you know, uh, him being fired up one day, and how he uh, created. Uh, no Vaseline. And then that became like the ultimate disc record. But then that springboard to the chronic. And then from the chronic to the, the dog food. And we could go on and on and on. Look at everybody who gave birth to either a label or another form of hip hop after that shit. We got to go back to G Unit, Slim Shady. You can name names. You know? You can name names, hey, brother. Hey. You know? So. Hey, I was gonna say, I was gonna have a, uh, somebody submitted a question here about one of those tracks off the Lynch Mob album, "All of My Nutsack." Like, how did y'all come up with that concept? <laughs> he said, "He said, I'm sure there's a funny story I, about that." It is a funny story because we were smoking weed, sitting up at the studio my homeboy T Bone from Venice Showline had, and uh, it was called "One Up," and uh, me and Pooh, me and Pooh sitting in there, high as fuck, talking shit to each other. And he had this sample, and the horn section was just ba da 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 da, but don't do no, ba da da, you know. And I kept hearing that horn, ba da 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 da, and then threat. People don't believe this, but threat walked in the room and said, "All on my nutsack," and he said, "What? What you say?" That's where it came from. It came from threat heard the shit in his head based on the horn blowing on the track that pool was constructed, and next thing you know. We done put this song together. Got Be Real to uh, let me sample pieces of uh, Stone is the Way of the Walk that's in the intro. And uh, it's crazy because mm-hmm. I remember just like yesterday. The shit was dope, man. It came up. And then what we wanted to do was chase the dope dealers off the block. Because people say, nigga, you a hypocrite. Nigga, you used to sell dope. Yeah, that's true. But Shorty got that cube. Cube said, you niggas is peasants. Get the fuck up out of here. So we just found a way to make this, this parody of uh, chasing down the dope man who ain't put nothing on nothing in the neighborhood and just continue to poison the hood. And he clowned me. I clowned him. But at the end, I gunned down the dope dealer, you know. And it, it was it was crazy, man. It was it was fun as hell working with that brother because Cube is innovative as hell, man. And uh, we always found ways to make the smallest things big. You know, that's just how he was, man. You know, man, and the way know, y'all and bounce I, ideas and concepts off that album, man, that was one of the hardest albums I ever heard, man. I, I, 
And we and keep in mind, we were like shorties coming up. We was like what twelve, thirteen, I believe. And we first heard that song like Buck Devil with you and your heroes. <laughs> Y'all was going in, man. Hey, you know what the creepy, eerie shit is, bro? Is I'm in a penitentiary right now in a city called Blythe, and I'm about to come home. And I wrote a song called Lost in the System. And it's on that Lynch Mob album. And when you get to the end of this, this song, it says the final pen I was in was in Blythe, and that's why I damn near lost my life. And uh, I got sick with COVID in 2020. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, oh man, I worked out, exercise, rest my body, pray, stay prayed up, and the Heavenly Father Yahweh, man, bless me, and I came out of that shit stronger, healthier, focused, grateful, and then I go up into this boardroom and these people tell me, you know what, we find you suitable for parole based on the fact we know you didn't kill this man, we know you didn't commit the murder, we just was angry oh, at you, wow. not telling on the boy who did it. This is what they tell me: right. we know you didn't pull the trigger. We just don't understand why you didn't tell them the person who did it and clear your name. Told them, man. You know, it's, a, it's that's a whole other interview, but understood. This is how understood. it ended. Understood. The final pen I was in is in Blythe. <clears throat> I'm about to get back my life. You know what I'm saying? You know, Jay, so. and you know, first off, like you said, man. You know, and praise to the Most High, man, because you know this thing is real. You know, and that's another conversation to talk about about these. You know, false prophets. These, I'm gonna just call it these these fraud ass philosophers trying to say this COVID doesn't exist because we, King, myself, we've lost friends to this. So you know, I mean, so we know it's real out there. So we're just glad you're still with us. Oh, it's it. real. Um, you yeah. know, what y'all were, and you know, one thing about it is, in terms of that, you know, gangster political movement y'all had back in the '90s. With Q's, you know, death certificate, and y'all with, you know, gorillas in the mist. Um, to see where America is right now, man, it's fucking scary to see how far along y'all were ahead of the curve with those albums. Y'all were 30 years to ahead of the curve, man. It, it, I hey, mean, I'm telling you, though, but it, it, look at it. Anytime you get social unrest, brother, anytime you get um, an administration like this orange cotton candy head motherfucker sitting up in the White House giving marching orders to destroy the Capitol building to basically give them a green life of insurrection and right. have a mob mentality. This is a mob right. mentality. Anytime you get social unrest, anytime you get oppression to those levels, brother, you're going to get pushback. Look at the Black Lives Matter movement. If those was brothers and sisters on those Capitol steps, it would have been 150 body bags out there still being snatched up off the ground. But these was angry You're white right. folks pissed off at other white folks. So, But it, it, it still goes to show you, Democrat, Republican, people are pissed off and tired of the bullshit. But any time you get an administration like that who promotes vehemently, promotes racism, bigotry, classism, separatism, you're going to get that kind of pushback. And back in the day, the music reflected that. See, the right. day the music right. don't really reflect that. I seen, I heard some shit from Nippy, uh, Nipsey, uh, uh, Nipsey, rest in peace, and uh, YG. They did uh, FDT, Fuck Donald Trump. Yeah. And that shit was dope. That was dope to me, mm -hmm. you know. That was dope to me because I didn't think that that generation would come with something socially conscious, you know. And that shit was dope. I mean, it was their version of what they understood in politics to be at the time, and I respected it. You know what I mean? I respected that. But we need music like that. That's the kind of music that promotes change. That's why I love Chuck D so motherfucking much. We we have that. Ice Cube did it. Arrest the president. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That nigga's Russian intelligence. I like that shit, you know? Uh, people frown yeah, on that. Yeah. They don't want to hear the truth, man. Motherfuckers want to be cough served out and peeled up and, and, and neglect responsibility so they don't have to make the changes that they need to make. Jay, it rattles you know, that you know comfort zone. Definitely, Jay, King, you know say? we can't forget the day. Yeah, because they know if they make a stand on, 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 on speaking the truth, they know they got to... They get, it's going to rattle that comfort zone. So they figure, hey, let me just be safe on this side, just talk about drugs, ice, and cars. Because they know if you rattle that fence, they, they can't really hang with the smoke like you guys did. 
Man. And, yeah, and, but and yo, hip, yo, hip hop was. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jay. Think yeah, about ahead, it though. Ahead. It was never comfortable. Hip hop was never comfortable in the nineties, in the early two thousand, late nineties, early two thousand. Hip hop wasn't comfortable, you know. It was thought provoking. You know, and you needed your thoughts to right. be provoked. Just put, when you had your thoughts provoked, that's when change came. You know, now it's just mm-hmm. it's just be high as a motherfucker and jump out with a chopper and kill everything your color. And that shit is crazy to me. That's crazy. You know. You know, Jay. And that's you know, Jay, crazy. Also too, man. You know, Jay, and also too, while y'all were holding it down in L.A., you know, with y'all, you know, with y'all revolutionary movement, we can't forget about Paris up in the Bay. Who was dropping his albums during the time? You know, you know. Well, I mean, album, he was. Too. Yeah, you know. It's still oh, absolutely, it. absolutely. Yeah. yeah you talking about Paris? Pete off, man. Paris mm-hmm. was a, He was one of the ones. You know, but I mean, I don't take nothing from nobody in their art form because if that's what they lifestyles depict, that's what they see every day. It's cool to write about it, but at some point, right. man, wake somebody up, man. Shake a nigga and wake him up, man. Shake him and wake him up. You can't just sleep through the whole motherfucking album, man. You just can't. <laughs> Shake a brother and wake him up, you know. You got to wake him up because these dudes out there leaning to the left with this this, this cough syrup. They popping these pills. These dudes got these choppers, and they will kill you. They ain't got no problem killing me and you. But you let this orange motherfucker order somebody to come knock us down, and then we don't do nothing. We just sit back and just watch our people get knocked down. Look at Jacob Blake. Look at Breonna Taylor. Look at George Floyd. Man, we know the list of these brothers and sisters who've been, you know, mistreated and done dirty and murdered. You know, that's what yeah, it's probably Philando to Castile. be right there. Philando Castile, Sandra Bland. You know, it's the list goes on. Um, Absolutely. You know, Jay, and, and you know, Jay, it's also because I mean, you know, because. I mean, this is so much because we're talking about in terms of the political consciousness and how, you know, of course, you know, where y'all were, of course, it was carrying on tradition with a lot of others. You have 60 seconds also, remaining. This call hey, uh, and your hey, telephone number hey, will be hey, monitored hey. and recorded. Let me shoot, a, let me shoot yeah. this question for him. Let's go from a man on Rye Wood. He want to know, the, do ahead, you remember ahead. the gang truce in 92 after the rise? It was the lynch mob, Dub C, and the Mad Circle, and CMW. The whole crowd was nothing but gang bangers. Absolutely, and I'm the one that led the prayer in South Park with Maxine Waters standing next to me. Absolutely. Oh, Maxine, yeah. Absolutely. Brother, it was an honor and a pleasure. This thing is going to hang up off the cuff. I love you, brothers. Thank you for the opportunity, and shout out to my beautiful wife, Cookie Cooper, my brothers and sisters, my aunts, uncles, and all my homies out there. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. Jay, we love Let's you. Mind. Appreciate you, Jay. We Let's love mind, you, man. Brother. Look, we, we, we got to do this love again you too, when you brother. get out, Love you, too, brother. I'm man. on my way. Yes. We're going to do this again when you get out, man. Already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's J.D. from the Lynch Mob, man. He's coming home soon. And yeah, we're about man. to sign up out of here, Off the Cuff Radio. I'm going to tell you all this while I'm on the line. Y'all better subscribe to King Eric Productions. I'm getting my Spike Lee, Tyler Perry, one of the fly, uh, Martin Scorsese on with these fly videos that I'm doing. (laughs) I need some support here. Subscribe to the Off the Cuff Radio Channel. We hit 40K as a matter of fact today. Oh, man. And thank you all for, look. Man, between Screwball, you know, King Air Productions, Off the Cuff Radio, look, you know, we cannot thank all of you, our fans, our listeners. We love you. We cannot thank you all so much for helping us grow this movement, for constantly standing with us, you know, who who have who have been undying and uh, and unwavering, and you all just really, really, really rocking with us, and we can we're going to continue. To keep bringing the very best that we know how in hip hop journalism, bringing you, you know, an unbiased and a just a real approach, man. And like I said, keep rocking with us, man. We thank y'all. We love you. Thank you. Most deaf, man. So yeah, on that note, we about to sign up out of here. We're gonna be back. Matter of fact, I'm gonna be doing two back to back shows. As a matter of fact, we're gonna have a show Thursday night. Friday night, and I got screwball. So, yeah, I'm about to be the Deion Sanders of this, man. Straight prime time in y'all, man. 
I'm going to hit a home run on Thursday. Touchdowns in the same And on Friday, week. I'm going to score the winning touchdown. So let's go. Strike that pose. That's right, the Heisman pose for Hip Hop King. Most definitely. All right, we see y'all Thursday. We out. That's right.